This is your city. This is your city wants to know. We want to know the background, the heartbeat of what makes up our beautiful cities. We dig into the backstories from the struggles to the successes of our local entrepreneurs, small business owners, artists, not for profit organizations, and the many, many people who make up the intricate tapestry of our communities. Real people, real stories, by you and for you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of This Is Your City. As always, I'm Kim, your host. Thank you for joining us again. I just wanna run a few things by you guys. I wanna put this in your head. Imagine having all of these credentials. Some of them, I don't even know what they are, but certification in massage therapy, certified muscle activation technician, certification in IMT, which is integrative manual therapy, a bio photon, oh my gosh, I probably got that one wrong, bio photon practitioner, certified in kinesio taping practitioner, endomology, oh my goodness, you're going to have to help me with that one, uh, Allison. <laughs> endomology. Endomology, <laughs> which is the lymphatic drainage system that I, and she's also Kripalu yoga certified, so many things. Okay, these are all credentials and letters behind a name of my guest. I don't even know what some of them are, but the list is this long. She is qualified beyond qualified. But my guest today has an amazing story and some of the reasons for the qualifications in her life. My guest today, she is a beautiful woman. She lives in Colorado and I am desperate to get her last name right. We just said it before we started coming on and it's Alice, Allison Light, Lighthouser. Is that right? So close, Kim. So close. Definitely bonus points for trying. Lighthouser, really close. Lighthouser. <laughs> did I not say Lighthouser? I guess I did not. A lot of times people say Lighthouser or Lothizer or something like that, but it's, <laughs> it's Allison Lighthouser. No problem. <laughs> You and I had it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, thank you, Allison. Thank you for being on the show. And yes, those are all your certifications and many more, and all of the letters behind your name. So you have qualifications coming out of your ears. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Kim. Yeah, I, I, I would qualify myself as a lifelong learner, and I love learning new things. And so it's it's been fun to get those little letters. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's, it's something, the good pride, it's something to be pride, proudful of. Pride up, prideful. Can, did I tell you that I can't speak today? <laughs> I was just telling you before I started pushing record that I had this eye appointment and they put these things in my eyes and now my pupils are so big and it really just kind of, I feel like I'm all over the map. So forgive me, Allison. <laughs> no, you're, you're totally fine. Actually, the eyes, Kim are a huge way that the brain gets information and feels safe. And so when you, your eyes are having a little struggle or a little different way that they're interacting with your environment, it tells your brain like, wow, ah, I'm not really sure what's happening here. So it's really disconcerting because your eyes give your brain the most information of any other sensory organ, like more than your ears, more than your nose or your mouth or your proprioceptive system, like how you feel your back on the chair or in the car or wherever you listen. And um, your eyes give your brain 10 million signals per second per eye, which just like blows my mind incredibly. <laughs> like how amazing is that? So if they're like a little disrupted, a little dilated, it's uh, it's hard to take in all that information. Well, thank you. I feel so much better. <laughs> I feel normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's Thank you for that. That's a lot of information. See, there's another reason you have all of those credentials. <laughs> Thank you for that. Wow. Okay. Well, I want to get into your story, Allison, and we'll get into all of those credentials in a, in a minute. I want to talk about everything you do and, you know, how people can, and can reach out to you and stuff like that. But this didn't happen overnight, all of these credentials, obviously. And there's a reason that you went into this field this field of study and that you're a lifelong learner. And I want to take our viewers back a few years. All right. So 
you at the age of 16, well, prior to 16, let's even go before 16, you were athletic, you were into sports, you were doing a lot of normal teenage stuff, you know, sports teams and all things like that. But then at 16, something happened to you. So tell us, take us to that moment, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right that things happened even before then. But um, I had, I think when I was in sixth grade, actually, I got mono, which is uh, the Epstein-Barr virus. And some people when they have mono, they're like, Oh, yeah, I have mono, and they're still going to their job or their college classes or something. And I had mono so badly that I could not get out of bed. Like I was so wiped out by that. And um, then I got it again a few years later and in between that time I had other health issues so it, it, it had escalated so that by the time I was 16 I had also had um I, I was a pole vaulter and a gymnast and so I had had a couple of really bad falls on my neck on my head and I'd had um I don't know I think like three or four concussions by then as well <laughs> so the um when I was 16, though, <laughs> the the thing that really got our attention was that I started falling quite a bit and there was a lot of um, of just neurologic things happening and I was having horrible migraines, intense pressure, um, and when I would move it would just skyrocket and I was having a hard time sitting up by myself and then eventually my body started shutting down and I was actually totally unable to move from the neck down. I was quadriplegic. And uh, I was also having like seizures and I wasn't in organ failure, but I was like right on the edge with my kidneys and my liver. And most of the doctors that saw me were like, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. And they didn't offer me a lot of hope. They had some pain medication for me, but not nothing like, oh, well, let's do this now. And what was interesting is that I didn't really match um, a set rubric. I was uh, an enigma, a mystery. <laughs> and um, so if you had to have five qualifications for Guillain-Barre or MS or um, uh, you know meningitis, I would have like four of the five. So it was quite a strange conundrum that was happening and my, my body was just shutting down and I was kind of dying like they didn't know if i was going to live or die and so i went and let me just stop you there for one second yeah. sorry allison so you started you know falling a bit more being unstable all of these things happening and you, you just kind of added in there i became quali quadriplegic like did it just happen all at once or were your like limbs kind of like one moment you couldn't move your arm you couldn't move your leg and then all of a sudden you couldn't bend over like did you just wake up and like I can't move? Well, it was kind of, it was about a month of degrading function, and oh. then um, I was really low function. Like I could, if I was laying down, I could still kind of move my arms a tiny bit. But um, it actually happened in the hospital that I was in the hospital and they were doing a bunch of tests and they had messed up several and kind of mismanaged and my body I think just went into shock and was like uh, no more like. Absolutely no. Like I'm just completely shutting down. We need to reboot the system. Um I've been terrified. Yeah, it was it was um I was in so much pain and I just was like, ugh, this is terrible. And I um it was really weird because the um I'm quite a sensitive little flower, Kim. And every <laughs> medication that they were giving me, even if it was just pain medication, I was having these horrible, terrifying um hallucinations, or you know, if like two percent of the population who takes this drug has this horrible reaction, like that was me. I was having trouble breathing, like it's crazy. <laughs> so um my body was really going through a lot at that time. And so your parents must have been terrified. Yeah, I am um, really, really blessed because even though they were totally overwhelmed and scared, they kept looking for answers. You know, they didn't say like, okay, well, doctors, you don't know, you know, <laughs> what's going on. I guess we'll just go home and wait for you to die or get better, or whatever. How long so they just in the hospital for? Um, I was like, let's leave. <laughs> is awful and I'm just getting worse yeah uh so I was the first time I was in for about a week 
And then we were waiting. I grew up in California and we were waiting to get into Stan Stanford uh, for, you know, other opinions. And but there was like a three month wait. So I was like, let's go home while we're waiting because this is awful. This is just yeah. making me much worse. So in, in the meantime, we were working with a, an alternative nurse practitioner and she was using all kinds of supplements and different modalities with me to help shift me through and what was really interesting is i don't know if you've ever heard of raindrop therapy it's um it's an essential oil application and you layer on different oils on the spine yes and, and um yes yeah and she was the first one to introduce me to that and that was quite an experience because a lot of those uh oils are antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, and oregano, for example, is like four times stronger than penicillin. And they were layering the oils on my spine. And I remember being like, oh man, I am this, I thought I was in pain before. This is a new level. Yeah. And the, um, the virus, I think was reacting to that. And I had like burns and blisters all up and down my spine because it was drawing out the virus in my spinal cord. And um, so by the time we went back to the hospital, which I, I think it was maybe five to seven days, I can't remember exactly um, how many days we spent at the next hospital, but that was three months later. And I had been doing a lot of interventions in the meantime. And the uh, doctor said, okay, well, we think the virus might be gone, but it's just the damage that's remained. So then they sent me to a, a rehab, an inpatient rehab hospital where I did intensive uh, occupational therapy and physical therapy and stuff like that. But um, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the main, pretty much the mainstream doctors were, were not able to offer me too much. And um, what did they say when you told them that you were, you were doing holistic medicine or naturopathic treatments? What were, what were their thoughts and opinions? Because they uh, really don't usually call that medicine because I go to naturopaths too, rather than go to like, not, not, I'm, I have nothing against medicine, modern medicine. Yeah. No, I think there's a time and a place for everything, right? Um, I don't know. You know, <laughs> I was kind of like busy <laughs> being in like out of my mind pain. Yeah. I don't really remember what they said or, you know, a lot of the doctors said, well, you know, since I didn't match anything, they said, well, it must be in your head. You're, you're making it up, mm -hmm. which was really unhelpful. Um, and it's so interesting, you know, when, when we don't have the answers, like, what do we say <laughs> in those moments? And, um, the, I don't know that they were like, oh, great. Keep doing that. Or I don't, I don't know that. Does that make any sense? You're, you're a gymnast, a pole vaulter, and now you're in a, you can't move. You're in a wheelchair. I'm assuming because you can't move. You can't walk. Well, actually I couldn't even be in a wheelchair because I couldn't sit up. I couldn't hold up my own neck. So um, they have special wheelchairs where you can recline. So, okay. and I also had this thing <laughs> where if someone sat me up, I would lose consciousness. So I had to have the, the reclining wheelchair back quite far to stay, oh, to gosh. stay conscious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's cool. So my, my first assignment when I went to that rehab um, facility was to raise my hospital bed up to a, like, a, I can't remember what degree it was, but to, to raise it up and to remain conscious and carry out a conversation. So I, we were like, that's where we started <laughs> was, was there. Yeah. That's incredible. Like my mind can't even like process this, you know, sometimes we can say, you know, over thing, oh, things over time, but this just was so rapid. I mean, yes, you had the virus when you were younger and you had the, the, the mono, but the spinal virus that just caused your body to, to give up on its own, on itself was kind of rapid. I can't even imagine that. I can't even put my head around that. So you go in and you start doing physiotherapy. That must've been intense and painful. Super. Yeah, wow. it was. And so I was in there for about a month. And um, this is kind of a fun story to tell this story because my mom was my main caretaker. And when, once I went into the rehab facility, she actually kind of collapsed from exhaustion and she was having her own health issues. So uh, I was really wanting to, for her birthday, which is June 17th, to um, be able to take my first steps for her. And so I was working towards that goal and 
you know, that little athlete heart <laughs> that I have was like, okay, we're going to do this. So um, what was interesting is I did, I did do that. And I, I did actually retake my first steps and it was very made for TV moment because I, you know, took a couple of steps and then fell into her arms. It was oh swelling of that emotional music right there <laughs> and uh that was that was a moment in time and then fast forward i when i got better like in college and fast forwarding probably like eight years seven years i wanted to say thank you to god for my health and i was like huh what wouldn't a quadriplegic do and so i actually walked the camino de santiago which is a 550 mile backpacking pilgrimage through the southern part of france and the northern part of spain and i did it with my friend grant who is now my husband we actually started the the walk on june 17th we didn't mean to but i took my first steps on that walk and then the following year we got married on that day too, which was really oh. awesome. So June seventeenth was a great day for me. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So okay, you got better. You're going through physiotherapy. You take your first steps, and you fall into your mother's arms on her birthday. Beautiful. You get better, and you decide, okay, how do I show my gratitude? You know, and so the pilgrimage was. Um, I, I've heard of this pilgrimage before. I want to do it actually, but so you said, okay, how do I thank God for this? And you want to do something that most people couldn't do because even if they can walk, most people don't do this, right? So you do this pilgrimage on the 17th of June with your boyfriend. Was he your boyfriend at the time or just a friend? He was, he was like my best friend. Yeah. Well, that's, wow. This is like a made from. <laughs> <laughs> so your best friend decides to go with you. Now, to continue on this path, because I love these kind of stories, did you guys. Was it on that trip that you guys discovered that you had you had deeper feelings for one another? Well, I already knew. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I had tried to tell him a couple of times and literally like the night where I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. He he was like, let me tell you about this girl that I met. And then another time when I was gonna tell him, he was like, I think I'm gonna discern being a priest. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna keep this to myself. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we're we're just gonna be friends. And I, you know, I was okay with that at that time. But um my sister actually when we met in college and my sister met him when we were sophomores in college and he was like she she was saying, Oh my gosh, you're gonna marry him. He's perfect for you. And at that time he was dating somebody else and I was like, Oh no, no, they're you know, he's he we're just friends. <laughs> we're just friends. So um a lot of people called it, you know, before it happened. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and then, so you do this pilgrimage. How long did that take? Um, I think we did it in 32 days. <gasps> wow. So some days we were walking 5K, 4K, some days we were walking 40. So it just depended on what we were trying to do. <laughs> yeah. What an amazing, amazing thing. What yeah. an amazing way to, you know, say, hey, like, thank you. I can walk and I'm going to do all I can. That's amazing. That's incredible. And then, so brings me to another point that I was like, so excited that caught my, my attention with you that I had mentioned to you earlier as well. So now you, you were a young athlete doing all these things. Then all of a sudden this, this, this thing happened, this disaster, this pain, intense pain, then you can't walk, you're in a wheelchair you you get better through intense therapy you do this pilgrimage you meet the man of your life the love of your life and you become you start becoming an athlete again i mean walking that pilgrimage distance is an athlete in my opinion but so what what made you decide so i and many of my viewers i am a huge fan my husband and i watch it all the time since the very beginning of American Ninja Warrior. So in case my viewers don't know what that is, go Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really hard obstacle course. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's intense. I mean, it's intense. We've heard of um, Mudder, um, what is it called? Tough Mudder. Tough Mudder. We've heard of all of these things. Spartan. Spartan. Yes. American Ninja Warrior, oh my gosh, put them all together and more, and you've got American Ninja Warrior. What 
made you decide that that's what you wanted to do? Well, I, so rewinding (laughs) to (laughs) when I was 16, nothing actually was fixed. I was just pushing my body and had some help with some traditional physical therapy, but I actually went back into a wheelchair after that time. And I wasn't ever fully quadriplegic, but I, I couldn't sit or walk, but I could kind of like flop around. (laughs) I could kind of like do the worm, you know, wiggle a little bit. But, um, so I, I found some other alternative therapies and I was doing those and that's what made me better. And that's what, when they said, oh, we think we can help you. I, we hadn't heard those words for over a year. And, um, I started getting better really quickly, Kim, and it was so exciting. And I was like, man, this is what I want to do for other people. You know, I want to bring them hope and and healing and restoration. And so I began, uh, you know, learning (laughs) lots. And as this healing is never a a point A to point B, you know, there's ups and downs. It's more of like a roller coaster ride than a linear event. And so for the next probably 10, 15 years, it was up and down. It was more up than down, but there was still downs where I'd relapse and have, um, you know, have these periods of time where um, I would usually, usually what would happen is I would push myself too hard and then I would get a fever and I would have a hard time walking the next day. And I'd, you know, it'd maybe take, you know, a month the first time and then it would slowly, the time would decrease for me to recover. And uh, so through learning about the integrative manual therapy, that's my that's what mainly helped me walk again that was sustainable and that was uh where i found my foundation for my alternative therapy practice and so i started learning and then i met you know lots of practitioners so there and the the woman who founded integrated manual therapy her her name was uh sharon weisselfus g mateo and i got to study with her but she actually put together a particular treatment plan to help me get better and she named it after me so when people would meet me they'd be like oh you're the you're the you're oh LED God. you're the one who um you know used to be quadriplegic so I had met these practitioners and they were starting a clinic in San Francisco and I was um gonna be working there too and so I was working really closely with them and became really good friends and then that the clinic actually ended up closing down and me and Alan Keneally started our own, um, our own business together and he, American Ninja Warrior was his dream. So that's how I got into it. And I went with him and cheered him on when he did it. He did season three. That was the first season that he was on. And so we would go every year and cheer him on. And then we had our manual therapy practice, but we also wanted. Tell me his name again. Alan Keneally. Okay. Sorry. The beast. (laughs) Yeah. Um, he hasn't been on for a while, but. Yeah, so we we wanted the functional, the physical, the movement side of rehab and wellness. And he had a big passion for movement. I had a big passion for movement. So we actually uh, co-owned a a Ninja Warrior and parkour gym um, in California as well. And so we decided that we would all do Ninja Warrior together. My brother went, my brother was also co-owner. My husband was also co-owner and um, Alan, he was the main one. He's really the talent (laughs) and we just did it for fun. but so that's how I got into American Ninja Warrior and we would host a lot of competitions at our gym. And so it was fun to get to know, you know, Jesse Graff and Flip Rodriguez and, you know, people who are more, more recognizable, more talented than I am. And uh, so it was pretty fun. I had two kids by then. So it was, you know, balanced to try and work and train. And I wasn't actually able to train a ton because my body had, you know, yeah, still yeah. kind of a, a limit at that point but um because of the g- gymnastics that i did i took to things pretty quickly my body awareness and um whatever just it just worked out yeah. so um i applied they accepted me and i did two seasons so i fell both times on the second obstacle in the <laughs> second year i uh i was like oh my gosh this course was made for me because if i could ever complete a course it was it was going to be that course and um, the second obstacle was like a wheel that you got in with your, and you had to press with your hands and your feet. So many people were falling on it. It was, 
it really weeded out a ton of people because it's really hard. And as we were getting, I was, as I was getting set up in the wheel, um, my daughter, who I think was three or four at the time, she started chanting, mommy, mommy. And this was probably like at 3 a.m. in the morning. But it was so funny because the whole crowd started chanting, mommy, mommy. Aww. It was so sweet. And I was like laughing while I'm in it. And so you spin around. And I got so disoriented, Kim. I finished the obstacle and I jumped off the obstacle in the wrong direction. <laughs> It was so, oh, I was so like, are you kidding? I can't believe that happened. But um, it was, it was really fun. What I love about what you do and what you're in and the knowledge, the vast amount of knowledge that you have with the body and truly just because my own small experience in, in this, you probably know more about the body than most family practitioners. You really do because you know, I've been to doctors, everybody's been to doctors and they're just like, and my doctor probably couldn't tell me what you just did about my eyes. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not putting down any physician, obviously, but you have a lot of knowledge, a lot. And so what is your, what is your goal now with all of this? Uh, well, I, I'm really shy, Kim, actually. <laughs> I, I, I have a, an introvert. I mean, I, I loved connecting with people, but I have never thought of myself. I never imagined myself teaching or lecturing or doing podcasts for that matter. And I, it, I had been kind of being nudged yeah. to step up and do a bit more and have more impact. And what, what really happened for me was COVID. And when we were all shut down, I, I just became like the anger that I felt was so, um, so much that I was able to nudge myself out of that fear. Right. Because what I was seeing was people were going downwards. They were backsliding because they weren't able to go to their healthcare practitioners. You know, like they couldn't go to their chiropractor or they couldn't go to their acupuncturist or their physio or whoever was helping them support their healing journey. Right. And it just was like, oh, I have tools for them. <laughs> that they can do on their own at home, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I, I need to, um, it's time I need to get out and teach. And so I am, I have a online program. I do some free trainings. I have a free Facebook group. I'm just trying to like educate people more about their own bodies and how they can intervene. And I love doing that. I love talking about the brain. I love talking about, you know, what we mentioned, the eyes and how our, our brain gets different information and how we can change the way we feel by doing a few exercises to help our nervous systems feel calm and safe in the way that we interact in the world, the way we interact with our families and right. with the way we can show up for ourselves, It's so different if we can like have a tool to instantly calm us versus going down a spiral, a, a downward spiral, you know, of yeah. stress or dysregulation. So it's really, I love teaching people how to regulate themselves and how to get into that healing space. Yeah. Because if we're really stressed from chronic pain or chronic fatigue or, you know, something happens at work, it doesn't matter. It just, it's really hard to heal. It's hard to get that forward motion and that uh, traction yeah. in our health. So that's, that's my mission right now is to just equip people uh, with the tools that they need to heal themselves. And I think, now, I mean, now is always a good time, whether it be yesterday's now, today's now, but I think the times that we're living in right now, and I think you touched on it quite nicely, um, it, it is, it's like this kind of anger that boils in saying we can, you know, people are afraid to go to the doctors. Not only were they, were they not able to go because of circumstances, they didn't want to because of fear. I'll tell you right now, I don't want to go to the hospital. Oh yeah. I don't want to go. And it's scary. And so what are our options? And it's really, for me, having people like you out there who have tools for us that we may not know that we have ourselves, right? We, you don't know what you don't know. And so we need somebody who knows to help us. And that's you. And I really, I admire that. I admire that nudging. I'm glad you're listening to that inner nudge. And I'm glad that um, it's been given to you. And I'm glad for, I'm, I'm happy for many things. The fact that you're got out of yourself, got over your own fears and that you're stepping into 
you know, the, the, the word of the year is your most authentic self, right? Everybody's saying those words, but you're doing that. And I love that and stepping out of that fear. But I love the fact that you have something to offer us that's real, that's natural, that we all possess, right? And we just don't know how to do it. I love the fact that you are going to show us how and that we could do it without fear and without judgment. And it would be to me at the end, the end result is like, wow, this is really cool. I didn't know I could do that because you're going to give somebody those tools. I'm all about that. I'm all about self. And I have, I'm like writing a book too, but we won't get into that, but you know, inner excellence, right? Like our inner excellence, we have it in us and you are going to show us how to do that. Yeah. That's exciting. I think so. Well, you think it's, I mean, it's you, it's happening to you. Don't you think it's exciting? I, you know, it's been so fun to do these trainings and these programs because I get these amazing testimonials of like, my pain was at a nine, at an eight, and now it's, you know, a two, three, or I, yes. I couldn't get out of bed because I was so fatigued and, and now I'm, you know, working again. And, you know, so it's, it's so fun to see the impact that this work has and, yes. you know, the way that the Holy Spirit is moving and like transforming people and helping them be their true authentic selves, because it's hard to do that when you are struggling with an injury or an illness or just being really the burden of today is there's so much stress there's so much fear like you were saying and you don't even have to have a chronic disease right now to be needing this work to be needing the regulation and the ability to come back to yourself and be able to show up and be present so and knowing that you are you have a a part in that that you have been given a part in that to to partake in and to give to us I mean that's to me I could just go on all night about that but um I think that's amazing and so here's a question for you what about a book oh I've had a lot of people ask me that Kim really? I uh you know I've always said well, maybe someday you know I I for a long time actually I didn't want to talk about my story I had been so you know, so, so deeply embedded in my experience. I didn't necessarily want to like talk about it more <laughs> or like think about it more. So I, was, I had done enough marinating in that pain and difficulty that I was ready for some distance. And so obviously now I'm coming back to it, but, um, and I, you know, I've done 10 years of trauma therapy and lots of other things to help me be able to revisit those and, and be able to trust my body and be able to trust the process. But, um yeah I maybe someday we'll see I don't I'm not working on it currently currently yeah but the thing is you have you have something you have trust you've you've been through it yeah and so when people will will buy your book to to you know you're going to teach them these tools you're going to I'm telling you what you're going to do with your book so you're going <laughs> to maybe you can co-author <laughs> you're going to give us the tools through your book as well with your with your course and your in your what you're what you're offering and people are going to read it and know that you have authority in this mm -hmm. right because you you've lived it and you've overcome it and yeah. it works what you're teaching works and you, you're a living product of that so write your book right <laughs> all right kim <laughs> So you talked a while ago about, um, you have these, you have course, an online course. Um, yeah, some of it's recorded, some of it's live. Okay. Yeah. So what it, tell, tell us about that. So people know where to go, how to get it, what it is. Yeah. Um, well, I, I have a six month program and it helps you go through different aspects of how to train your brain as well as how to give some, some relief to your organs. Cause it's not usually just one thing. You know, we're not just one pocket of physicality. We're this three-dimensional person. And there's also elements of emotional, mental, spiritual um, healing in it. Because again, we're not just one aspect. One uh, an injury or an illness is not usually just physical. You know, that we're, right. we're, there's all these other components to it. So it's a six month process and you go through these teachings and some of them are different drills to help 
you approach your brain and your neurology to change your nervous system because there's there's two modes of the nervous system right there's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and the sympathetic is that mode of you've probably heard people say like fight flight or freeze and then parasympathetic is rest digest and heal so it's all these different ways that we can go kind of in the back door of the brain and let go of some of that fight, fight or freeze response and get more into the parasympathetic, into that rest, digest and heal. Because when we can get there and stay there, we're going to be able to get way more traction on our healing journey. Right. Actually, do you want to do something? Yes. Right now? Okay. Do you have uh, water? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so your nervous system is different than mine right so what works for me might not work for you so if this if you're listening and you want to do it with us it might not work for you but this is a drill for the vagus nerve and that is the 10th cranial nerve it it comes out of the back of the head and then comes like on either side of your neck and around your heart and down into your digestive system it's quite a long nerve <clears throat> and it has a big relationship with the parasympathetic with the rest digest and heal so we're just going to do something to stimulate it and see how that helps you so we're going to take a little range of motion we're going to find a baseline and i'll just tell you the reason why we're doing that (laughs) because if you are say you were going to drive to my house and you were looking at your map and then all of a sudden the map stopped working like your posture would change your breathing would change your heart rate would change you'd be like hunched over the steering wheel, looking side to side, like, what was that address again? What street am I on? You know, and the level of stress in your body would would change, right? Your posture would change. And if you were driving home, you've driven this road 3,000 times, um, your posture is laid back, right? Your breathing's different, your heart rate's different, and your range of motion's different. And similarly, if you, like, stepped out onto a frozen pond, usually people are kind of walking really stiffly and they're not like walking the same way that they would walk in their kitchen. Right. So our brain interprets different levels of threat, different levels of safety, and it is immediately felt in our ability to move and our ability to have flexibility. Um, so we just measure our, a little range of motion and we're going to check it before we do the drill and then after. Because if some people, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And, and other people, it's like, no change. No but change. It just, the the art of it is trying to find the right one for you. So we'll just try it. Okay. We're going to gargle. So we're going to gargle the water. This is a fun audio for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it with you. So um, you could just check a couple different things. You can raise up your arm and just check how your shoulder's feeling. Ugh. You I'm can. like tensed up to hear you. Yeah. So just kind of, yeah, you can check both sides and then you can turn your head side to side and check how your neck is feeling. It's terrible. Yeah. (laughs) So then what we're going to do is we're going to take a a small sip of water because we don't want to choke and then we'll gargle. And ideally you want to gargle for like 10 seconds, but we'll just do whatever we can and I'll do it with you. Okay. And then we're going to recheck our range of motion and see how our nervous system liked it. Because when you're training the nervous system, when you're training the brain, change happens like lickety split, like immediately you get a result. So that's what one thing I love about this is that you can find if something works for you, you'll know and you'll you'll have an immediate experience of like, wow, I feel not only do I have more range of motion, but I I feel calmer. I feel more grounded. I feel more connected to myself. So let's try it. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Good job, good job. <laughs> so then now, sometimes I'll have people do that like three times, three three different rounds of ten seconds. But I don't think we did quite suck. We didn't quite do ten seconds. But let's just measure and see where we're at because we don't need to gargle <laughs> the rest of the night away. So my range of motion is changing quite a bit. I was like here before with my shoulder. I was like at a 45 degree angle. My shoulders were a little stiff. And um, my body likes this because I'm getting more range of motion. I'm getting change immediately. So if, if, if this was a good drill for you, you should feel like more relaxed. You should feel more centered in yourself. And usually you'll have more range of motion. It's interesting. Do you think 
do you think our psyche plays a part in this? Because as I was doing the gargling in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is so funny for my viewers. And then I thought, I thought, well, this is going to work. So as I'm doing that, I feel like my mind was telling me it's going to work. And so do you think that that plays a part in it? Like your mind is saying, relax your shoulders. And so all of a sudden now I am. I, I always think mind, mindset plays a part. I've had um, a lot of <laughs> reluctant participants. And uh, when I'm working with clients, you know, a lot of the time the story is, I've tried everything. I don't think you can help me. Oh. And I'll have them, you know, do a few things. So we're just looking for a win, right? We're just looking for some homework that they can do to help regulate themselves. And um, sometimes I've had people do a forward bend, like trying to touch their toes. Uh, as a measurement, yeah, as a range of motion measurement. And I had, I've had multiple people who have been like, oh my gosh, I've never been able to touch the floor. And like in one drill, they're doing it. And even when they're reluctant. So I guess I think it always plays a part, but I know that it works. I know that you can kind of bypass that. And when you're helping the brain feel safer, even if your internal dialogue isn't like spot on <laughs> for yeah. change um it's still you still get change well this is interesting i'm really intrigued in that and so you offer this to people you have the six month course mm -hmm. yes it's called inner restoration and then uh you know there's live coaching calls too where you know people have questions about their individual diagnoses right. or their their process and how they're learning it and then um we, we also just follow up with certain drills that we want to make sure people are doing correctly. Right. So it's, it's really fun. I love it. Well, some people might think, oh, six months is such a long time to commit. But when you're thinking about it, when you think about your health and your mental stability and your, your, your spiritual being, it doesn't happen overnight. It never does. No. Nothing and happens overnight. And if you want, so you want results, you have to work at it. And sometimes, you know, that's, you have to take the time, take the time for yourself. Yeah. And like you said, I have, <laughs> I have had a few things that I've studied. And one of the comments that somebody said about me one time was that working with me is like drinking from a fire hose. And so the, uh, the amount of information and empowerment that I'm trying to give people, you need that amount of time to digest it and be able to internalize it. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's so much hope and there's your body's worth fighting for, you know, mm -hmm. I, that's one thing that I always come back to is that your body's worth fighting for and going through this training, going through the tools equips you not just to feel better, but like what happens when you feel better, your relationships are richer, your work is more productive, your self-confidence is different. You know, there's yeah. so many repercussions to investing that time and, and helping you have the tools to, to change because I can go to the chiropractor. I went to the chiropractor today, actually. I can go to the chiropractor, but then like, I can't do that on myself. Yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But I yeah. can do all these tools yeah. on my own. Yeah. And so I think <laughs> there's like this big subset of people that are really prepared, like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts that are like, have the generators and have the three month, six month food supply. Right. And I feel like this is part of that. This is like um, tools for life that you can use at any time because life is not smooth sailing. You know, we always have new challenges and new ways that we're growing and this can help regulate our, our bodies and, and help us to uh, integrate and change and overcome and thrive and what i really like what you just said because yeah so we do this and we take six months but you know god willing we have a longer life so this is something you know in two months two years or three years five years when life changes for you whatever that might be these are tools that you can go back to like, oh yeah, I did this. And, you know, it's been a few years, but it's tools that they can go back to because life is always evolving and changing. I mean, the only thing that's constant is change, right? So right. pull this, this that you've taught them and these tools and bring them back out of their tool, their tool belt. Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So that's awesome. And where else can they find you? Um, I have a free Facebook group, which is also called Inner Restoration. And then I do some free five-day trainings periodically where you can get kind of a taste of what the program is like, because yeah. it is a big commitment. And especially when people come and like I said, they, they've had that story of 
I've tried everything. I yeah. don't think you're going to be able to help me. It's just like a different way to see how you can work with the body and the, these different tools, these different windows into the body. I love and, that. Um, it's a really lovely way to get some tools and get a little more information. Well, I like that five days, like, Hey, let me just give you five days to show you that this can work. I love that. Yeah. You know, if people take a car for a test drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that six month course for a test drive. And I mentioned before, like a big reason why I want to do this is impact, right? I want people to have the tools, whether they can make time and put aside the investment time-wise or money-wise for the program. I want them to walk away with, with some tools to be able to, to get at the ground level. And so the, the free training, the five-day training is really nice to give anybody who, who is remotely interested <laughs> some, some really lovely ways to help their bodies heal and move forward. And I love this. And I, speaking about the times that we're in, you don't have to be in Colorado. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? You don't have to be in Colorado to, to get Allison's course and get Allison's training. You can have Zoom or Facebook. And there's so many ways that we could do it now that there's no excuses. So uh, I'm really grateful that you shared this with us today. And I'm going to have all of your information up on the on the website, on the, the podcast so that people know where to find you and how to find you. And um, I'm just hoping my listeners look, every one of us needed. I, I know some of you guys out there. I, I know some of your Facebook pages, even if we've never met, we all need some inner work. We all need, especially in this time we're living in now, so much anger, so much division, so much resentment, so much frustration and fear. We need to get over this. We need to get out of this. And if somebody is willing to teach us and show us some tools, somebody who's been there, somebody who's done it, somebody who's a life learner, who has many, many credentials that most of us don't have all of those, um, then we need to take that. We need to do that. We owe it to ourselves. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So working towards that, that inner excellence, like you mentioned before. Yes, exactly. Yes. So we need to do that. And I thank you, Allison, that you are willing to step out you know, of your extrovertness, uh, because this is something you're so passionate about and you, you believe in so strongly that you're just willing to step out of your own discomfort and your own fears to do this for us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when new things come your way, I hope you let us know so that I can have you back on and we can promote it or we could just chit chat. I'd love to have you back on just to chit chat, just to talk about stuff. Cause I thought, I think we had a, a good time here and, Absolutely. um, yeah, so we'll do that. And yeah, anything else comes your way? If you get that book out, let us know. <laughs> Think I about absolutely it. will. You'll be the first one on my list, Kim. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Allison. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's a delight. Thank you. And for my listeners, as always, thank you so much for tuning in again. I do appreciate you from my heart. And as I always say, don't forget to like, tweet, download, share, subscribe, send a pigeon, whatever you do, make sure you tell everyone they should be listening to This Is Your City. Stay safe, stay blessed. Ciao. Thanks.